in this video, I want to take a look at non-linear regression. So everything that we've seen so far for correlation, so the first year material on correlation, is looking at what we call linear regression. So now for the second year material here, what we're going to look at is non-linear regression. So to start off with, let's just recap linear regression. So if I think about sketching some axes here. Okay, so I've got two variables, x and y. Then for linear regression here, let's plot some data points. Let's say we have something that looks like this here. Then what I can see here is this regression line. If I just quickly sketch a regression line here. Okay, something like that, for example. What this shows then, or what this models, is a linear relationship between the two variables here, x and y. Okay. Now, sometimes we might have data that doesn't particularly fit a linear model. However, it still shows a pattern. So, for example, again, let me just sketch some axes here. I've got my y axis here. And if I sketch my x axis here, that's my x axis. Then, for example, here, again, if I just plot some data points, you might get something that, say, looks like this. Okay. And notice here, then, this is clearly not linear. It's not a straight line like we've got here. However, I could use something that say, a look, say like this, okay? So what I can do then is use logarithms and coding to examine trends in what we call non-linear data. So if we have data that can be modeled by a relationship of the form y equals ax to the power of n, so let me just write this down here. So for data, that can be modeled by a relationship so this would be of the form in the form This would be y equals ax to the power of n. Okay. Now here, in this case, if we have data that can be modeled by relationship in the form of y equals ax to the power of n, then we need to code the data here. And what we need to use then is y. So y equals log y. And x equals, you might have guessed it already log x. Okay. So to obtain a linear relationship here, we need to use this coding. Okay. And then, like I say, we've got this relationship here, where a and n are constants, where a and n are constants. And what we can do here is reduce this to what we call linear form. So in linear form here, this would be presented as log y. So log y equals log a plus n log x. Okay. This here is what we call the reduction to linear form. So reduction to linear form. So that's the first relationship that we can use here. So if we have data then, that can be modeled in the form. So basically the same here, but now, so for y equals, so now we have kb, so we have kb to the power of x, so y equals k, b to the power of x. And this is for constants k and b. So where k and b are constants, then here for our coding, what we need to use now is y equals log y. So same as what we've got here. 
So y equals log y. But it's not the same here. So in this case, then, what we'd use now for our code in here is x equals little x. So we don't take a logarithm there. So y equals log y and x equals little x. Okay. And this would give us here a linear relationship. So just like we can see here for data that can be modeled by relationship in the form of y equals ax to the power of m. Like we've got here, if we have a and n being constants, if we use this code in here, we can reduce that to linear form. The same is true here then for data that can be modeled by relationship of the form y equals kb to the power of x, where k and b are constants. Using this code in here, again, we can reduce this to linear form. So what would we get here? Well, in this case, then what we're going to get is log y. We get log y equals log k. So log k plus x log b. Okay. And there we have it. So then are the key bits of information that we need here for this chapter on nonlinear regression. So it is worth pointing out that this exponential regression here, that isn't the only form of nonlinear regression. We have quadratic regression, for example, um, cubic regression. There's many other types of regression, but for this course here, so for the second year of A-level maths, all we're concerned about here is exponential models like this. Okay. But like I said, if you want to do, say, maths or stats at university, you're very likely to come across these different types of um, regression. Okay. So that's everything that we need here for the introduction. Like I said, these are the key results here. Do note these down. We're going to come across these quite a bit within this chapter here. Um, so like I said, important results here, do take notes. Okay. And again, this is reduction to linear form. Let me just make a note of that here before we finish the introduction. So reduction to linear form there. And that is for y equals kb to the power of x, where k and b are constants. Okay. So there we have it. So that's everything that we need there for our introduction to non-linear regression. So all we're going to do now is just take a look at a couple of practice questions. Starting off with question one here then, where we have two variables, x and y, and they're related by the formula y equals ax to the power of n, where a and n are constant. So what we're going to do here is show that the relationship can be written in the form log y equals log a plus n log x. So this form here isn't anything new. We've already introduced this, but basically all I want to do then is show how we go from this to this. Okay. So to begin with here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to start by writing this down. So we have y equals ax to the power of m. So y equals ax to the power of n there. So what I'm going to do to begin with here is take logarithms of both sides. So if I take logs of both sides on the left hand side, we're going to get log y. So I get log y on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, now I'm going to get log. So we get log of ax to the power of m. Like so. And what we're going to do now is use the properties of logarithms here. So because I have the logarithm here of ax to the power of m, we can split this up then as the sum of two individual logarithms. So we have log y is equal then. So what I'm going to get here is log a plus log x to the power of m. I've got log a plus log x to the power of m. Okay. And then we're nearly done here now. All I need to do now is use the power rule here for logarithms. So we've got log y. That's equal to log a. And then finally, I can now bring this n down in front here using the power rule. So we get plus n log x there. Okay. And there we have it. So as required, exactly as we needed. Okay. And there we have it. So a nice introductory question there, um, but it just shows how we go from this form here into this form here. Okay. And there we have it. So it gives the solution there to question one. If we just take a look then at one more question here, we have data that's collected for two variables, x and y, and presented in the table below. So we can see the table of values here. We're then told the data is coded using x equals log x and y equals log y. So for the first part, then it says complete the table above. So hopefully part A is nice and straightforward. So for log x then, 
it would be log one, log two, log four, log seven, and log nine. So what I'll do is I'll just write down these values here, just save a little bit of time. So we're gonna get zero, 0 0.3010. 0 we then get 0 0.6021. Then we get 0 0.8451. And then finally, 0 0.9542. That's the first row complete. Then for the next row, we're gonna get 1.176. We get 1.505. We get 2 here for log 100. Log 160 is 2.204. And then finally for log 250 here, that's 2.398 there. Okay. So that's what you should get for log X and log Y, giving us part A done. Now for part B, it says calculate the product moment correlation coefficient for the coded data. So notice here it's the coded data rather than the original X and Y here. So to find the PMCC, what we need to do here is use our calculator. So you need to ensure that your calculator can find the product moment correlation coefficient for a sample like we've got here. So I'm using quite an old Casio graphical calculator. Um, but if you're using kind of any modern a graphical calculator it should find it in the exact same way so what i do is i go into stats mode now once i'm in stats mode here i get a number of different lists i've got list one list two list three list four and so on so what i'm going to do here is take list one and list two and what i'm going to do here then for list one is input the log x value so i'm going to get zero not point three zero one zero 0.6021 and so on. We keep going here until we get to the last value of 0.9542. So we enter all of these values here in list one. For list two then, we do the same thing here, but for log y, we're gonna get 1.176, 1.505, so on and so on. And we keep going here again, so we get to the last value, which is 2.398. Okay, now once you've done that, we can now go on to find the product moment correlation coefficient. So what we do then is we press calc. So calc here to calculate. Once you press that then, you're gonna get three different options here, or I get three different options anyway on my um, ancient graphical calculator. So my options here are one var, two var, and reg. So we press reg here for regression. We press regression here. And we get a few, a few different options here now. So what we want here is just X. We want X. Once you press that, you get two different options here. So you've either got AX plus B or A plus BX. And I'm gonna choose here A plus BX, okay? Truthfully, it doesn't matter which you pick, um, but I just prefer to work with A plus BX, okay? So they'll both give you the same product moment correlation coefficient. And then what you get here is a few different values. You get A, B, R, and R squared. What we want here is R. So R here is the product moment correlation coefficient. So therefore R in this case for part B. If I run this to say three significant figures here, I get 0 0.996. Okay. And that is two three significant figures. Okay. And there we have it. So that's the solution to part B. Now for part C, we'll do this underneath. It says, hence or otherwise, state whether a model in the form y equals ax to the power of n is appropriate, where a and n are constants. So, what we're looking at here basically is this r value. So, the closer that this is to 1, in other words, perfect um, positive correlation, then that indicates this here would be a good model. So, because this is very, very close to 1, that would suggest then that this model here is appropriate. Okay, so because r. So because r equals 0.996 is close to 1, what that would indicate then is a graph of log x against log y would be close to a straight line, okay? So in that case then, because r equals 0.996 is close to 1, this would suggest, this would suggest, 
y equals ax to the power of m is appropriate. Okay. And that's all we really need there. If you want to state that, obviously, um, because r equals 0 0.996 is close to 1, and then that would mean a graph of log x against log y is close to a straight line, you can state that as well, but I don't have tons of room, so I'm just going to kind of omit that line there. Um, but either way, that would be fine. And then finally, for part d here, it says determine the values of a and n. So this is where things get a little bit trickier. So what we've got here then is basically to find these values here of a and n. That's what we want to do. So the first thing that I need here is the regression line. And to find the regression line, we go back to this here. So a plus bx. So again, using the same list of values here for the coded data. What I get then is, like I said, a few different values. I get a, b, r, and r squared. So what I want here then is a and b. So we start with y equals here. So y equals. What I then got is a plus bx. So a, that is 1.164. And you should get the same here. So 1.164. And then b here, that is 1.28. If I round that to three significant figures here. So plus, so plus 1.28 there, x. Okay. And because we're using this code in here, so x equals log x and y equals log y, again, this would be appropriate as well. So what am I going to do here? Well, we have this code in here that x equals log x and y equals log y, so let's use that. So y here, that's log y. That's log y. I've got 1.164. I can't do anything with that. 1.164. And then we've got 1.28x here, but we know x is log x. So what I've got then is 1.28. So plus 1.28 log x. Okay. So what I'm going to do here then is get rid of these logarithms. Um, I'm going to get rid of the logarithm here on the left hand side. So because we're working with logarithms base 10 here, we don't write the 10, this base 10. If we just write log, we're assuming we're working with base 10. That's implied. So if I anti log here, what I'm going to get then is y equals. I'm going to get y equals 10 to the power then of this right hand side here. So 10 to the power of 1.164 plus 1.28 log x. Okay. I'm going to run out of room here a little bit, I think. Um, let's see if we can get there. So now what I'm going to do here is because I've got a summation here. So I've got 10 to the power of 1.164 plus 1.28 log x. Using the rules of indices here, I can write this then as a product. So therefore y is equal to 10 to the power of 1.164 times by 10 to the power of 1.28 log x. So 10 to the power of 1.28 log x there. So if we finish this off up here. Again, we need to be using the properties of logarithms here. So this 10 to the power of 1.28 log x, I can write that then. Let me do it up here. So 10 to the power of 1.28 log x. Well, that is the same then as 10. Using the power rule here, I can bring that up then to the power. So I've got 10 to the power of log x all to the power of 1.28, like so. And here, because this is 10 raised to the power then of log x, because that log here has base 10, they're the inverse of each other, so they'll cancel out. And I get left then with x to the power of 1.28. Okay, so just using the basic properties here of logarithms. So that's just first year A level maths. So what I get then is y equals 10 to the power of 1.164. And then we times that here by x to the power of 1.28. Okay. And then in this case here, notice I've got it in this form now, y equals a, so this is a here, times by x to the power of m. So in that case then, a is equal to 10 to the power of 1.164. Put this into your calculator here, and what you should get then is 14.623 significant figures. So that's 14.6 there, 23 
significant figures. And then in this case, n would be this power here, which is 1.28. Okay, and there we have it. So that gives us the value of A, the value of N, and that gives the solution there to the very last question, question two, and that brings the end of this video on nonlinear regression.